This is the for practice example 5.5 on page 179 of our textbook. And here we're going to be predicting whether each of the following compounds is soluble or insoluble. So the best way to make this prediction is to consult your solubility rules for ionic compounds in water table. And I'm going to go through how to interpret this table with you. So it's broken up into two components. The first group of ions, pretty much if these ions are contained in a compound, they're generally defaulted to soluble. Meaning if you see one of these ions in a compound, typically that compound is going to be soluble in aqueous solutions or water. For each ion, there are a set of exceptions. So you'll see next to some of the ions, there's no exceptions. Meaning like if we contain lithium, sodium, potassium, or ammonium as an ion, it's always going to be soluble. There are no exceptions. For ions such as the halogens, if they're for some reason paired with silver, mercury, or lead, those compounds are going to be insoluble. Same with sulfate. Sulfates are typically soluble unless they're paired with strontium, barium, lead, silver, or calcium then they're insoluble. So first part, default to soluble, unless it's paired with an exception. The bottom part of the chart, on the other hand, these ions are generally considered to be insoluble in solution, meaning if you have one of these in your compound, it's generally defaulted to being insoluble. So hydroxide, sulfide, carbonate, and phosphate are the four generally insoluble ions. On this side, we have exceptions, but this time our exceptions mean that it's soluble. So hydroxide and sulfide ions are typically insoluble unless they're paired with lithium, sodium, potassium, or NH4 plus, ammonium then they'll be soluble. If sulfide is paired with calcium, strontium, or barium, those compounds are soluble. If hydroxide is paired with calcium, strontium, or barium, those are slightly soluble. So on each side we have ex exceptions to the rule. And then we have carbonate and phosphate which are typically insoluble unless paired with lithium, sodium, potassium, or ammonium. In that case, they would be soluble. So we're gonna use this chart to help us determine whether each of the compounds listed here is soluble or insoluble. So in this case, I'm going to say S stands for soluble, I stands for insoluble. So, you look at the first compound, that is nickel 2 sulfide. Sulfide, we can find, and typically it's done based on the anion, um, unless it's ammonium. So, sulfide is down here in our default insoluble category, but we can look and make sure that nickel is not one of our exceptions. So nickel is not listed anywhere the, in the exceptions, therefore nickel to sulfide is considered insoluble. And I'm just gonna put an I for that. For magnesium phosphate, I can go and consult my table and see that phosphate ions are typically going to be insoluble unless they're paired with an exception. So I can look and see the exceptions are lithium, sodium, potassium, and ammonium. Magnesium is not listed as one of the exceptions, so therefore this compound is also insoluble, because phosphates typically are. C is lithium carbonate. 
So this one we can do by looking either at the lithium or the carbonate, doesn't matter. Both rules will give us the same result. So if we're consulting based on lithium, lithium's up here as typically being soluble, and it has no exceptions. If we wanted to consult based on carbonate, we could look at CO32 minus down here and see that yes, it's generally considered insoluble unless it's paired with something like lithium, then it becomes soluble. So our answer for C is that this compound is soluble. D, final one, is another one where we can use either of our ions. So we can consult based on ammonium or chloride. Ammonium is up here in our soluble category. And when it's paired with whatever, there are no exceptions. So it's typically always soluble. And chloride is also typically always soluble unless paired with silver, mercury, or lead, which is not contained in this compound. Therefore, this is also considered soluble. So when in doubt, consult the rules and they will help you to determine whether something will dissolve um, and be soluble in water or not dissolve and be insoluble.